Pat yourself on the back because you are right here right now for a reason. Welcome to the On Purpose podcast where together we'll empower ourselves and others to live lives with more passion and purpose. How are you doing this morning, Jared? I'm great, Ali. How are you feeling, my friend? Oh, doing fantastic. Just got on board with a 75-day challenge and feeling great. Hit two workouts this morning already and just feeling super good. Two workouts already, and it's, what, about 8 o'clock? Yep. Wow, good for you. Yeah, shouts out to Andy Frisella and his team for putting together the 75 Hard Challenge. Ali and I are going to take that and, and kind of document the journey of it. And with that, we want to share that with you guys because we are always seeking more purpose, more completeness in our lives as well. And we challenge you guys to do that. And, and one of the ways you can help us is by sharing our podcast, sharing the stories, participate in doing your practice, but let more people know about it. Obviously, we're out here doing this for free. You're not hearing sponsors. You're not hearing commercials. Nobody's selling you guys anything. So, so pay us back if you like the messages. You're getting something out of this and share it. Let other people know about it. And let's really create a whole community that's seeking more purpose and not just seeking it, but finding that purpose in our lives. Amen. So I, I'm excited for today. You just got back from Texas. You spent a weekend in Texas. Yes. I was just up in the Black Hills of Wyoming. So we both kind of unplugged a little bit from our daily grinds and what we really, what we really do every day, um, which ties in nicely to this episode. And so I kind of want to hear how your weekend went and, and how, how do you really feel when you come back from being unplugged? I think that's an interesting topic for many of our listeners. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So today's topic is vacation, rest days, recoveries, and myths. And, you know, when I unplugged and, and went over there, I, I felt great in the moment. I was really enjoying uh, being with friends, being with family. I love the beach. The beach is my favorite place in the world. But I was admitting to Jared earlier that I did not feel good with, after all the decisions I had made. I drank a lot of alcohol uh, three days in a row or three evenings in a row, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And I, I got some work done. I was productive, but not nearly as productive as I could have been. And although, that I, although I did enjoy the beach in the moment... I think I would have enjoyed it much more and it would have been a much better memory. Frankly, if I just didn't drink as hard, if I didn't party as hard, I went out every night to the bars and drank a lot. And it just was, uh, every morning I'd wake up like, ugh, you know, just, just, just not feeling, not feeling completely refreshed. And I sure. came back not, I, I came back feeling more tired than I would have. If I had uh, worked th through the weekend, so that was a, a big proponent to why I was uh, I was really ready to counterbalance. If you guys go back and listen to the balance episode, really counterbalance those actions and and just took on that seventy five hard challenge by Andy Frisella. So let me so let me ask you this then. So you went to recover, relax, just get away, but then you almost come back regretful that you didn't work. And I think that's an interesting balance and kind of a dichotomy in thought because we, we want these recovery days. We want to just get away for a minute. But then when we're away, a lot of times we miss what we're supposed to be doing or we just don't feel like we're accomplishing much. So how, how do you get to where you enjoy a recovery day or how do you get to where you enjoy being away from the grind? It's a great question. I think I enjoy it when I, I I don't overdo it. You know, when I don't overdo the the recovery and and it just so happened that this group of friends was a bunch of old high school buddies where we have a lot of great memories drinking together. And I think for me, I've I've realized at this point in my life that alcohol just plays a really minimal role uh that I don't really need to be drinking to have fun and and for me rest and recovery doesn't really equate to getting drunk, you know, yeah. and drinking a lot of alcohol. Uh, I think a, a good rest and, and recovery can definitely be enjoying the beach, can definitely be uh, enjoying time with friends and family. You know, as an extrovert, I really feel recharged by spending time with people, with people that I love and care about. Um, but 
honestly, a big part of me didn't want to go, Jerry. Yeah. I, I did not want to go. I didn't feel like I needed the rest. I didn't feel like I needed to recover. And I think that I fell into the myth of, hey, we need we need rest, we need recovery, we need this balance, when I didn't feel like I did. Sure. But I had just booked that trip, I had made the commitment, and I almost felt obligated that I had to go to that trip. Um, and and, and I, I consulted with a few people and were like, oh, you know, you, you needed yeah. a rest and stuff. But uh, but honestly, I, I, I didn't feel like that. You know, there's a, the people say that uh, even God rested on the seventh day, right? But like, did you create earth? No, you don't need to rest every single week. You know, nobody's working that hard. So I, I think that I fell into that that belief that, oh, maybe maybe I needed some rest when, frankly, I didn't really feel like I yeah, needed Yeah, I would it. say you, you fell into that trap that I think many people fell in, fall into, and, and this is why, like, my rest and recovery days this week, and I felt great. Um, and, and I think, for me, the difference is I still did what I was felt like I needed to be doing. I still gave a presentation. Uh, to a, to a group of salespeople in a small business on you know addressing fears, limiting beliefs. Like, like I still got to work if you call it work, but I did it in a mountain mountain setting outside with ponds and sunsets. So while I was working, I was still recharging and refreshing. And I think the difference between our two examples is this because I was guilty of it many times as well. Sometimes we think rest and relaxation means a 360 degree switch from what we do every day and now we can't do any of that. I can't check email, I can't be on my phone, right? I just have to do all the well, that's like a shock to your system, right? Cuz you're used to certain rhythms, certain things you're doing and I think for me I find my recovery and my rest more productive when it's not an extreme break from everything I do every day. Because when that happens, then I'm like, well, what am I supposed to be doing? Why, why am I feeling this way? Like, what's going on? So I think it's moderation. And, and as I've gotten older, I've found that I feel better. I perform better when my rest still includes something that's moving me forward. Because I know in my head, if I'm not doing something to move forward every day, then I start wondering, what should I have been doing? And then it's not even restful. Because I'm creating my own stress because I'm like, I should have been doing this. I should have been doing this. When, you know, like up in the Black Hills, I taught for a couple hours and then I relaxed. And I played, you know, beanbag toss and frisbee and went on hikes and went on runs. So technically it's rest, but I'm still growing. I'm still allowing myself to to do what I enjoy. And, and I think that's a shift, right? I think we got to quit looking at rest and recovery days, meaning I do nothing, well, you should still do something, but maybe it's just different than what you do every day, but it still facilitates that moving you in the right direction. Yeah. How do you feel about vacations? You know, there's a lot of a lot of people, like you were saying, when they go on yeah. vacation, oh, you unplug, no phone, no email, maybe even no working out. Uh, how do you feel about I, I love vacation, but I, I don't believe in that. Um, I'll, I'll tell you one of the last vacations we went on that I absolutely loved is I took my family to Mexico for Christmas and we literally played beach volleyball for six to eight hours a day. Damn. And then I boogie boarded in the ocean for a couple hours every day. So I was very in tune with my body and I was moving, but I felt great. Like to me, that's relaxing, but I need to be in motion. As I've gotten older, if I take days where I don't push my body at all, I don't get any motion. I feel my age, to be honest with you. I get stiff. I get sore. My back starts to hurt. But if I go every day and just stay in motion, to me, that's kind of how I fight off aging a little bit. And, like, I love vacations to do stuff. Yeah. Uh, my wife will tell you I'm an absolute freak. Like, if you invite me over to a barbecue or camping or whatever and all everybody wants to do is sit around the campfire and drink, like, I'm going to lose my mind. There's only so much sitting around storytelling I can do. Let's go hike. Let's climb some stuff. Let's do something that challenges us because I, to me, that is recovery. Yeah. Right? If I do something that's different, well, now my body can recover from the grind it's been on, but it's still going to grow because now it's seeing something different, which allows my mind to grow. So I like to kind of term it active recovery. 
I think there's passive recovery where you kind of sit and do nothing. And then there's active recovery where you go out and facilitate your body healing itself. You facilitate growing. And and that's what I really emphasize is that active recovery. What can I do today to help my body grow, but maybe not impact it the same as it's been for the last couple months? Right. So that's, that's in the physical realm, right? How do you feel about in, in the working realm? Because here, here in the United States, most jobs, 40 hours a week, Monday through Friday, and you have Saturday and Sunday off, right? So most of us, at least in the corporate world, employees are used to having two days out of the week where typically you don't work. uh, I would say is, is the average case. What do you think about, about that setup? I mean, it's way less than most of the world. You know, other countries get way more vacation time and time off than we tend to do as Americans. And I think our health shows. I think it's important to take time off. I think it's important to go on vacations to get away, um, especially for our military, our first responders, our law enforcement, because their job is so stressful and so um, – they see the worst that we have to offer so many times that like it's important to get away, let your mind decompress, let your body kind of get over things and, and come back recharge. I think you're a better employee, you're a better servant to the community when you come back with that perspective. Um, so as a government employee, man, I was all about taking my vacations. One of the things that would drive me nuts is to have buddies that were saving all their vacation time throughout their career to sell back when they retired. And I, and I would be like, guys, you got vacation time to take it. Like you're missing all these memories to get an extra paycheck at the end of your career. I don't think that's a good balance. Yeah. What, what do you think yeah, as an entrepreneur, different. somebody that's building business, is vacation beneficial for you? I think so. I think I think that it's good to change up the monotony and. Like you said, I think I think with more intensive jobs that take an emotional toll, a psychological toll, that it is important to to disconnect from that temporarily. However, I do think that uh, sometimes I can be, and a lot of a lot of my uh, peers can be a little too soft, and that there that there's always there's always opportunity for active recovery like yeah yeah, i was out on the beach but i was also kayaking on the beach waves you know doing a lot did a little bit of running on the beach i got some work done before then um but then i I did counterbalance it with just like completely unproductive uh partying and drinking um which uh, it it also depends too on really deciding where you want to be i recently read something that michael phelps swam every single day for like 10 years out of his career. And the way that he saw it was, hey, that's 52 extra workouts that I'm getting per year over every single competitor. And I think that we tend to overvalue rest, uh, recovery, and, and downtime, especially if you're trying to be at the top, uh, in the top one to three percent of your field, whether you're an athlete, whether you're a business owner, whether you're whatever. If you're trying to be at the very top, then I think it has to be a lot less rest and recovery and more more changing up the monotony, right? If you're if you're not gonna be in the office grinding, hey, when you're on the plane, audio books or reading. When you're on the beach, you're reading a book. You're you're somehow leveling up in some way, in some way, while you're actively recovering. So then, I would challenge you a little bit on your perspective of your resting recovery from this weekend, because um, you know when we talked yesterday, you were pretty. You're like, dude, I gotta get back to the grind. I gotta get going. I was partying too much. But now, like listening to you expand, you actually went out in the ocean and rode. You ran on the beach. You did some business, right? So you actually worked, and then you partied at night. And, and I think that's kind of that mental hurdle a lot of people will get into is you actually were productive and then you enjoyed your night, but you don't give what you did in the morning enough credit. So then you kind of have this guilt concept of, well, I shouldn't have partied that hard. I shouldn't have done this. But the reality is you were doing both. 
And, and I think sometimes we get too caught up and I got to do more, got to do more, got to do more that we don't really enjoy those restful moments. So they're not truly restful. They just build more stress. You know what I mean? Because if you think back, if you look at it and you broke down your day, yeah, you didn't work as much as normal, but you still got some work in. You still worked your body a little bit. You still moved. So you should be able to enjoy the night if that's what you choose. Instead of leaving it come back and be like, oh, I, you know, having a negative connotation, like, oh, I did too much of this. I shouldn't have done that. I got to go back. Well, you should have been like, no, you know what? I must have needed that. It must have been my season. Okay, now, because now you come back and look what it did. It refreshed you. You're ready to go. You're recharged. You got that out of your system. You've even now thought, maybe I don't need to drink that much. Maybe that's not what I need to do in the future. But you wouldn't know that if you didn't just go have that time. You know what I mean? And I I think that's where a lot of us drop the balls. We try to be so perfect in everything. Like this is the perfect rest day, the perfect this. Dude, none of this shit is perfect. And until you do stuff, you don't know what adjustments you need to make moving forward. Right? But think you still have these memories with these guys. You, You still have this moment in time that you're like, hey, I enjoyed it. I learned that as I'm getting older, I shouldn't drink three days in a row. Now you have a new baseline for how do you want to recover in the future, you know? And that's the same for me. If I go away and I do nothing for three days and I come back and try to jump right back into jujitsu or try to jump right back into my fitness routine, I'm like, oh, God, everything hurts. Well, so now I know my recovery doesn't mean three days of inactivity. My recovery means reading, moving in different ways than I do every other day. But I think that's the important thing for listeners to understand and for people in our community to follow, man, is try some shit. And if it doesn't work, make adjustments. Don't just think like, oh, I I drank three days. I can't have any more recovery days. No more trips. No, you need trips with your boys. You need trips to reconnect. Now, the next time you go, you're like, hey, guys. You know, why don't we go on this hike? Why don't we go now instead of drinking? Maybe you offer other activities that fulfill your recovery and get them thinking differently. Yeah, no, I, 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 you're right. You're right. There is a time to, to party and have a good time and decompress and maybe do things that aren't very productive. However, I realized that this last weekend, I, I executed at a very high level on trying to be productive, but also the partying. Like, I wasn't just drinking. I was getting hammered, like drunk, all three nights in a row, staying up till at least 3 a.m., just a couple hours of sleep, and then heading to the beach during the day and then starting to drink again. You know, like, I put a lot of alcohol through my system uh, over the past three days, which – That tends to happen when I get with like a a big group of these guys and, you know, shots and and doing all this stuff to where to where I realize I can do that at a lower at a lower level. Absolutely. It's it's difficult, but it's not it's not impossible. So you're right. I did. I did have somewhat of a balance there. But I, I've noticed that I'll tend to counterbalance really hard, right? Like, look, look at me now. Like, I came back and I'm like, 75 day yeah. challenge. I'm not drinking. I'm not doing anything. But that's more of the direction that I want to go. Yep. Um, and when I do like decompress and, and drink and do those things, to just have it, maybe just maybe just tone down just a little bit, um, because I, I definitely feel it. And again, I am trying to be at that top one to three percent Michael Phelps level in what I'm doing. Yeah, Uh, I I agree. And I think that's a great goal. And I think it's a good lesson for you to learn, but you can't learn it without doing it. So a question I have for you is we've talked a little bit in the past about having purpose and passion. So you're very passionate about your businesses. I'm passionate about what I'm doing. Do you think that sways then the need for rest and recovery days versus somebody who's going to maybe a job they dread, a job that doesn't fulfill them and kind of feel like they're just stuck in the grind. Do you think there's a difference in who needs recovery days, how frequency and what they look like? I don't think it should matter. I think that if, especially if you're in a job that you dread and you're not enjoying it, that you shouldn't be resting on the weekends you or the, in the evenings too. You need to be putting time towards how can you get to where you want to be? 
how can you get towards something that you yeah. want to be doing? So I think if anything, maybe you need to be resting even less. Absolutely. Um, but I, I do think it, uh, on you know on on the other side that if you are doing something that you love and passionate about, you probably don't need to be resting as much because it doesn't feel so draining. Yeah, and I, I would say even more so. I'm passionate about what I'm doing, so I feel rested doing it. I feel energized doing it. You know, like yesterday, for example, um, you know, part of my routine, I get up at 5 o'clock, I meditate, I journal, I start my day every day. Well, we were jumping on a call, it was almost 10 o'clock last night, and we were still both excited, talking about, okay, what do we got coming up, blah, blah, blah. That's recovery. That's active, right, because that's making me excited. And, And guys... And ladies out there, if you're in a job that you're not necessarily happy with, you're, you're kind of like, oh, what am I stuck? I 100% agree with all these. Look at where you want to go and then start putting time and energy towards it. And that's how this started for me. I started this five years ago. Small increments every night working on something, every night working on something, a couple hours here, a couple hours there. And now I, I'm able to create this. But it became because I knew what I wanted and I was willing to give up some extra Netflix, give up some extra sleep, give up time that honestly I was just probably wasting online or doing nothing productive and really structure it. So I I think for a lot of people, if you're not where you want to be, let's look at how we spend our time and are we recovering and resting too much when we should actually be finding more purpose and driving towards what's really going to fulfill us in life. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm guilty of this too. And I think a lot of us don't really realize that there's a lot of active rest and active leisure throughout our work week, right? I mean, scrolling the internet, scrolling social media on your phone, simply, simply just looking at, at memes, whatever, to where we're so inundated with so many different so much different types of information that there's a lot of like downtime and leisure on the brain aside from just executing. And again, the Michael, Michael Phelps example, when I listened to that Andy Frisella podcast, I forgot the guy's name, James something. Um, but this guy ran like 57 ultra marathons in a row. Yeah. And by day three, they said that his toenail, all of his toenails fell off. They were gone. And he continued like f- 50 more days, some, some days like two hours of sleep, and he's doing ultra marathons. So I think there's just this myth going around that we need this rest, that we need this recovery. But I think one of the biggest takeaways of this podcast is that we are all as human beings so much more capable – of executing more than we can more than we can even comprehend right i mean we've had we've had unfortunately some human beings prove that they can go through the worst of worst scenarios i just finished a book a few months ago a man's search for purpose uh, uh written by a holocaust survivor and i could not believe some of the things that they would endure on a daily daily basis and also not having the fuel, not having nice AC and water and food and meals anytime they wanted. I mean, they were so hungry that they would get in trouble for when somebody died, taking some of their flesh to put in the broth of the soup. That is how hungry they were. And they continued to endure. And they didn't have any rest days or recovery days or anything. And yeah, that's an extreme. That That's a... The absolute extreme, but it just goes to show you how capable we as human beings are to where if you're not happy with your life, if you don't feel that you're living with purpose, stop resting. You don't, what are you recovering from? You know, you you don't need rest days and recoveries. You need to continue to execute on what it is that's going to give you purpose. It's going to make you feel fulfilled. And I'll let you guys know one thing that I've, I've been learning lately uh, from, from a lot of the books I've been reading, Eckhart Tolle, a lot more purposeful books, is it's really about being in the present moment, right? The, the future and stuff that we dream about is all, all, all that will be when we get there is the present moment, right here, right now. I mean, that's that's what this podcast is all about is just having having purpose and purpose is being right here right now and doing it right now yeah and enjoying the moments you get in life far too many times we look so far down the road like i'll get happy i'll be happy when this happens i'll be happy when i get to this place or that place and guess what you get there and you realize it's the same 
your happiness should have been along the way. The moments you had, the people you encountered, the obstacles you overcame, the stuff you learned about yourself. And, you know, to piggyback on your Holocaust example, what separated the guy that wrote that book and survived that from many others that probably didn't make it through? And, and, you know, and you can take that and apply it to a lot of things. What separates a lot of people in life from those that just kind of exist versus thrive is really knowing their purpose and really embracing that we're all unique. We're all capable of greatness in different ways and not settling, not being tricked into believing that, that your life is just for you to provide and go through the day-to-day things and and then die at some point. Remember, you all had dreams. We all had dreams. But how many of us are really working towards making our dreams a reality? That's exactly right. And that's a huge point, right? Because if I'm working to my dream and this is what I love doing, I don't need breaks from it. Matter of fact, my breaks from it, I'll be thinking about it and trying to get creative and I feel good doing that. And, And that's available for everybody. That's an option for everybody. And, and people are like, no, I can't do it because of this. I, I disagree wholeheartedly. Is it tough? Sure. Do you have to sacrifice? Absolutely. But they're your dreams. Right. If you're not willing to sacrifice for your dreams, what, what are we willing to sacrifice and, for? And, and you said something that really uh, I think we need to repeat, in the, and that was that the, the survivor, and I forget his name now, A Man's Search for Purpose is the title of the book. I forget his name, but of course he had other dreams. Of course he never thought he was going to be a Holocaust victim, right, in concentration camps. And what separated him, just like you said, was the fact that he found purpose in that environment, in that present moment. He was a doctor. So he decided that his purpose was to do everything that he could to provide the best living situations for his, his fellow Holocaust survivors. That, that wasn't his dream. You know, can, can you imagine? Of course that wasn't. But the, the fact of the matter is that the, in that moment, he had purpose. And I think that we, we put so much right uh, value on when's the next vacation, when's the next rest day, when's the next recovery day, and don't really enjoy what the purpose is right here, right now. Like we're right here, right now. We're doing our best to talk about vacations, rest days, recoveries. This is our purpose. We're enjoying it. We're executing on it. And I think that's one of the biggest takeaways from this podcast that we can, that we can give is like, find the purpose in the, in the present moment, whether or not it's a vacation, rest day and recovery and, and enjoy that and be grateful for that just as much as you would the rest day or the vacation. Yeah. Cause the reality is this, man, you're say you love vacations. I love vacations. Say you get one a year and it's a week. But that means you have 50 other one, 51 other weeks that you need to maximize that year. Uh, if you're just going through the motions to get to your vacation week and you do that year after year, you're living a week a year and just going through the motions for 51 weeks, man, that's no way to live and definitely not what this community is about. So, um, yes, rest days are important. It's nice to give your mind a break, but the same point let's earn those let's make sure that we've done the work that requires disengagement and if we're not where we want to be let's look at our time and figure out okay what can i be doing more of to get me where i'm trying to go uh quit just kind of following this road of life whatever happens just happens like you're the driver of your vessel in life like this is your life nobody else's if you have dreams you have goals Sometimes you're going to have to give up stuff for them. And for, for me, a lot of times it is the rest days and the recovery days. But I've also managed to now adjust those to where I feel I do things I enjoy on those days that are a little different than my normal week. But it still allows me to feel good in my mind that I've moved my family forward, that I've moved my dreams forward. Not just totally like put my dreams on a shelf and ran over and did stuff that has nothing to do with it because I wouldn't enjoy that. Yeah. And the sacrifices, you can't say you can't make sacrifices or you don't have time. Delete social media. Go to bed an hour earlier. Wake up an hour earlier. Delete your Netflix. You know, I can't tell you how many people I have watched so many shows. That's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours. You know, so you can find the time to live a more purposeful, purposeful life for yourself. Before we get into the practice, Jared, yeah. what, what would you say is uh, one of the what do you want to leave our listeners with about 
vacation dress days recovery is because you did you, you hit you hit on two on two points you know yeah first responders and things it's important to disconnect what what would you say kind of as an overall encompassing message yeah i i think overall enjoy your days off right like don't get to your days off don't get to your rest days and totally think about what you should have been doing last week or replaying what already happened the week before, like use those to spring you into the next week, whether it's, you know, making notes about, okay, I I need to improve here or there. Uh, First responders, man, I I definitely believe like that's more mental health than physical, like getting a break away from seeing negative, surrounding yourself with people that are doing good, finding things that fulfill you and move you forward. And I think that applies to everybody. Like you're going to, if your rest day is spent in a community like this, it's spent reading books, it's spent moving yourself forward. I think you're going to find that you're much more refreshed and you're much more satisfied with how you spent your time because it's propelling you to a new level. Beautiful. Very nice. So we got the purposeful practice. Again, this is the number one differentiator with our podcast than other ones is that we have an assignment, practice, practice for you to do to live a more purposeful life. So part one of the practice is to take inventory of how often and what are you doing to rest and recover from mental, physical, and emotional workload. Part two is what are your requirements to earn a rest and recovery day and or a vacation? If you have any, what are they? And then the most important piece is email your findings to us at onpurpose.official at gmail.com. Yeah, please get that in. I, I tell you, Ali and I are very humbled by the responses we're receiving and the vulnerability people show and sharing with us and the trust you've given us. And, and we promise to, to earn your trust every week, right? This, this is never going to be a go through the motions, create content. Like, yes, we'll create a content, but it has to have value and it has to bring you guys value. So, We appreciate you contributing to your practice. Keep it coming because sitting and listening, making some notes is okay. But when you really dive in and put things down on paper, that's when you're going to see your best results. So real quick, I also want to announce October 19th here in Fort Collins, Colorado, we will be doing our first on-purpose workshop. We're finalizing the details. We'll have an Eventbrite registration form and stuff coming out in the next couple weeks. We'll get that done by August 1st so people have two and a half months to get registered. We are limiting it to 20 people. It's the first go around. Um, we'll have some buy-in things that we'll explain later on. But 20 people max, I guarantee it will be the best four hours you've had in a long time as you leave with a blueprint, your personal blueprint to create your most purposeful life. So we are excited to start bringing this thing around the nation and person as well as the weekly podcast so uh, get your practice in stay connected let's continue to grow this purposeful community and remember team life is far too short to live any other way than on purpose thank you guys for being here we'll see everybody next week